Welcome to PEM Currents, the Pediatric Emergency Medicine Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Brad Sobolewski. Your time is valuable, and so is mine, and that's why I release these brief episodes. Get in, get out, learn something. Today's topic, Henoch Schoenlein Purpura, otherwise known as HSP. You should not complete pediatric training without seeing this diagnosis in person. What is it? Well, HSP is an IgA vasculitis that commonly occurs in children. The peak age is between four and six years. It's more common in white and Asian male children. It's commonly preceded by an infection like a URI, but so is everything else. And what you see, at least microscopically, is widespread IgA deposition in blood vessel walls, which causes a leukocytoclastic vasculitis with the following classic clinical manifestations. First, let's talk about the rash. It occurs in almost all cases. It's palpable purpura. It often starts as a wheel that progresses to look more echomotic, petechial, and then ultimately the purpura that are raised. You can kind of feel them as you run your hand over the skin. They appear symmetrically, classically below the belt line. So in gravity or pressure dependent parts of the body. So buttocks, legs, groin. The rash is usually not pruritic, and sometimes it can be just a little bit uncomfortable. Other symptoms you see, abdominal pain. This is about two out of three cases. It's typically diffuse and colicky. You may see vomiting and bloody stools because intussusception can occur. Now, it's only in about 2 to 6% of cases, and 70% of these are ileo-ileal, so small bowel, small bowel, which resolve on their own rather than the classic ileocolic intussusception. Patients will also have angioedema of gravity-dependent portions of the body, a lot of times the lower extremities and scrotum, but also of the scalp, eyelids, back, and feet. This may be one of the first signs, so scrotal swelling can appear before palpable purpura. About 40% of cases will have nephritis. This is the most feared complication of HSP. These patients can have gross hematuria, hypertension, and ultimately the nephritis may not develop for weeks to a few months after the initial diagnosis, and it can become chronic. Finally, we do have arthritis and arthralgias. This happens in 75% of patients with HSP. It's most common in the knees and ankles. It can become very painful and lead to a limp, but it's non-deforming and it's self-limited. Arthritis, like some of the edema, can precede the classic rash, which may make the diagnosis of HSP difficult. So in a kid with joint pains, you're thinking maybe this is like a synovitis or reactive arthritis. You should educate parents on what the rash looks like and when to look out for it. I'll also mention the testicular pain that happens in boys. You can get testicular and scrotal swelling just from the edema, or you can have a vasculitic bleeding appearance into the scrotum. This does not increase the risk of torsion and the management is conservative. Okay, how do you diagnose HSP? Generally, it's clinical. You don't really need labs, and if you get them, they're nonspecific. So if you're considering ITP, or if the patient looks really ill and you think it might be meningococcemia, then yeah, you're getting a CBC, those sorts of things. If the diagnosis is still in question, or there's significant renal disease, or it's a chronic presentation, skin biopsies of the lesions can help confirm. But ultimately, really all that you need is a measurement of blood pressure, and a urinalysis. The urinalysis is to look for blood and protein if you're concerned about nephritis. If you're concerned because the patient has significant abdominal pain and you're worried that they might have intussusception, ultrasound is the management. And again, I mentioned earlier that this doesn't really increase the risk of testicular torsion, but a patient with massive scrotal swelling and discomfort should get a scrotal ultrasound as well. Treatment of henoch schonlein purpura is generally supportive. NSAIDs are often used and are successful for pain management, but if you have GI bleeding or renal disease, you're going to want to use caution. Acetaminophen is also helpful as well. Steroids like prednisone, one milligram per kilogram per day, is generally not indicated for the vast majority of patients unless they have renal disease or severe abdominal pain, but there is some equipoise in the evidence, and most patients in my experience are fine to be managed as outpatients with over-the-counter pain medicines. And again, if the patient looks well, they can ambulate, 
They don't have severe abdominal pain. They're not hypertensive and they don't have blood or protein in their urine. They can be sent home. I would have them follow up with a primary doctor within the week for repeat blood pressure measurement and a repeat urinalysis. If you're worried about significant kidney disease, obviously get pediatric nephrology involved. Patients with severe abdominal pain, vomiting, dehydration, severe renal disease, they can't walk because of pain, do need to be admitted. Recurrence rate could be as high as one in three, but generally it's a little bit lower than that, and that should be discussed with family members, so they need continued follow-up with a primary care doctor or nephrology if there is renal disease. All right, I told you this one would be quick. That's it, a brief overview of Henoch Schoenlein Purpura, HSP. Do yourself a favor now that you've listened to this episode and go ahead and look at pictures of the rash. That way, when you inevitably see it, you'll know what you're looking at. If you've got any feedback, especially about these brief episodes, or there's other topics that you want to hear, drop me a line, email, comment on the blog, review on your favorite podcast site via Twitter or X or whatever it's called, or any of the other social media platforms. Any and all feedback is welcome. Subscribe to future episodes and tell your colleagues to listen as well. For PEM Currents, the Pediatric Emergency Medicine Podcast, this has been Brad Soboleski. See you next time.